Listen, 3.16 Highway Alignment. Listen 3.16 Highway Alignment. After completing this lesson, the student will be able to understand the general considerations and approach for selecting an initial alignment. What are the major considerations while selecting an initial alignment? The student will be able to understand the broad steps for determining a potential alignment, how a potential alignments can be identified. Then the student will be also able to develop alternative alignments and identify technically feasible alternatives for further investigations. Try to understand that estimated traffic volume is a major determinant of the route in a system wide context. That means when we are talking about roadway alignment, from the demand point of view, it has already been established that these two points are to be connected. That means there is significant demand between the two points and the need for connecting these two points has already been established from the or based on the traffic viability study. We have already determined that point A and point B to be connected and it is necessary to connect them because there are significant demands. So at this stage we are only trying to fix up the alignment while connecting these two points by a road. For the selection of roadway alignment, it is assumed that endpoints of the proposed road has already been decided as a part of the system wide plan as I explained just now. We have already decided that point A and point B to be connected. We are only deciding at this stage how we connect these two points with the road. Let us look at the general procedure for selection of alignment. The very first thing we should do, we should try to examine the natural and man-made features. Observe this part natural as well as man-made features. While doing that, selection of alignment should be done by relating topographical features, human habitations and environmental features of the area under consideration to geometric design controls. That means we have topographic features, 
we have human habitation, we also have environmental features. They are the three major aspects and we have to relate them to the geometric design controls. So, we have geometric design controls in one hand and in the other side we have topographic features, human habitation and environmental features. So, we have to relate them. In the process we use various sources of information namely topographic maps, aerial photographs, geological soil maps, sometimes we carry out ground surveys. So, these are the all different sources of information. Now, let us see how we use those information. First, topographic and geological maps. We study topographic and geological maps and we identify unsuitable ground conditions. For example, maybe wetland, rock outcrops, areas subjected to flash floods or avalanche, etcetera. Then we examine the contour lines to obtain an initial estimate of the gradient on undulating or mountainous parts and we delineate steeper slopes on the map. Remember that at this stage we do not intend to calculate the exact slope but we calculate or we try to develop a feel about the slope conditions. Like if we know that uh, we have the contour lines and within a very short distance we are crossing so many lines that obviously indicate that slope is going to change at a much faster rate. So, like that we it is a broad estimate to develop a feel about the slope and the general ground condition. We also then define streams, rivers, ravines, etcetera, because these are the places where we have to provide bridges or other types of extensive ancillary st structures or works. So, we try to identify the places like if we take the road like this, we may have to construct a major bridge or major tunnels. So, we try to identify those areas also. Then once we have identified those things, we list all the typical features of subsurface and soil conditions that are found on the topographic and geological maps. We also list all other features of interest. For example, avalanche areas, habitation, cultural activities because all these places they tell us that probably we should not run the road through an area which is avalanche areas or where there are cultural activities because we want to protect them or we want to avoid such places while taking a new road. Then with all this we try to summarize the findings on maps or overlays to guide the next step in the alignment selection. Let us try to explain these features what we have discussed till now. Say these are the two existing roads, these are the two existing roads and say we have already identified that point A and point B to be connected by a new road. So, obviously, we have to take these roads somewhere like this, like this, like this. Okay. We have to take this road through this area to connect point A and point B. So, what we are trying to say from all these maps, we try to identify distinct features for example, roads, marsh areas, steep areas, high elevation, habitation, organic or weak soils. That means, positions or features which are generally unsuitable for taking the roads. At least we do not prefer to run the alignment through those areas and we represent all these items with proper legend as I have indicated here using different legends and then you show 
this is the area which is like this, this is the area which is having some kind of special structure. So, we know which are the areas that we should try to avoid and if necessary because there may be a number of features which are coming or which are existing uh, in that area. So, it may be necessary that we prepare a number of overlays instead of trying to show all the features on one map, we prepare different overlays and maybe four features are shown in one map, next four features are shown in another map. So, that all the areas and all the items or features which are to be protected or which we try to avoid while you know taking the road, we do not want the road to run through all those areas or do not want to destroy some of these uh, existing features. So, accordingly we identify what are the unsuitable things and we prepare different overlays. Now, next is the aerial photographs. Often it happens that whatever information you obtain from topographic maps, they might be old maps. So, existing or the present ground reality might have changed a lot. So, in that case, if we have uh, photographs which have been taken very recently, we can use them to update the information what we have extracted so far from the uh, topographic maps. So, there we use aerial photographs wherever and whenever they are available, we use them and we try to update information that we have already plotted in the uh, in terms of different overlays using the topographic information. So, in aerial photographs, we examine the stereoscopic aerial photographs, two types of aerial photographs normally are used, stereoscopic aerial photographs and oblique photographs. So, from stereo scopic photographs, we determine whether the topographic and cultural features which are found or which are captured in the photographs are different from those shown in the map. And in case you find any change, all those changes are to be appropriately incorporated in the overlays. That means, whatever we have already done earlier, we just update them, we make them as far as realistic and present scenario that we try to provide. We also examine the oblique photographs to obtain a sense of the development and aesthetic features of the area and try to develop a general idea of the grades and other topographic characteristics. And obviously, all these should be checked with those on the map to ensure correspondence. Because topographic features, topographic maps we have used and we have already developed the overlays. So, at this stage from stereoscopic photographs and oblique photographs, we just try to update the information. What has, uh, what is the most recent condition in the ground or the features that we try to uh, take into consideration in terms of developing the or updating the overlays. It is worthwhile to mention that one should note in particular the presence of trees, especially the big trees, because such trees may make identification of the ground features difficult on aerial photographs. Because aerial photographs when they are taken, if there are big trees that may obstruct uh, the view of the ground reality. So, one has to be careful. And finally, note all local features that may be environmentally sensitive to the present of the uh, to the presence of the proposed road. So, all such features we note. So, we use uh, topographic photograph topographic maps, we also use uh, the aerial photographs whenever and wherever they are available and we try to update all the information in terms of overlays. So, that overlays clearly show us where or which are the areas we should try to avoid while we are trying to take the road while connecting these two points A and B. Now, let us try to understand the process for identification of 
technically feasible alternative alignments. Now, when we say uh, we want to connect road, we want to develop a road, all our idea is basically to develop or to improve the condition. So, at this stage it is worthwhile to look at this term improvement or when we say improve it, what we really mean by improvement. Let us look at this part. Improvement means make less expensive and safer for public in general. Obviously, uh, this part is well understood. We want to make it less expensive and more safer. Safer means more safe for public in general as well as for the road users. This part is well understood. Most of us we only concentrate on this part, but remember that this is an incomplete definition of improvement. We must consider this part also while at the same time maintaining or contributing to the improvement of environmental quality. We cannot really make it safer for public or make it less expensive for public at the cost of environment. If we are doing it at the cost of environment, then we cannot call it improvement. So, it is only we can claim it as improvement when we are making it less expensive and safer for public and road user, but the, at the same time maintaining or contributing to the improvement of environmental quality. That is very, very important. Now, as the title says that it is identification of technically feasible alternative alignment, it is necessary for us to understand what we mean by technically feasible road. It essentially means that no excessive construction or maintenance problems are envisaged and such that design controls and policy on geometric design standard are adhered to. You are already familiar, you have already studied uh, the geometric design part in details. So, you have the background with that you know that we have to satisfy all the geometric design controls whatever is the curve, whatever or radius or super elevation, grade, everything all the design controls are to be satisfied. And these are to be satisfied without excessive construction or maintenance problem. If we can ensure that with a any alignment, then we can call it a technically feasible route. That means, we satisfy the design controls without excessive construction or maintenance problem. Now, remember that a route may be technically feasible, but not economically justifiable or environmentally acceptable, because we have already indicated that grossly if you are satisfying the design control and criteria, they generally mean a technically feasible route, but remember that even if a route is technically feasible, it may not be environmentally acceptable or economically justifiable, because if it is causing any major environmental degradation or concern, then obviously from environmental point of view even its so called technically feasible route may be rejected. Similarly, once we carry out economic evaluation or economic analysis, we see the economic cost and economic benefit from the project or from the development. We may reject a project which is otherwise technically feasible just because of the fact that the project is not economically viable. That means, benefit economic benefit is not more than the economic cost. So, in that case we have to reject that, but how do we know that uh, whether a route is economically viable or how do you know that a route is not environmentally acceptable. Of course, preliminary selection does matter a lot. So, 
with initial selection itself, suppose we are avoiding all environmentally sensitive areas. So, we know that we are running the alignment through areas where grossly there is no environmental issues or no environmental you know uh, detrimental impact on environment. So, that generally uh, will give a sensible alignment, but finally, uh, we have to carry out detailed environmental analysis or evaluation and also the economic evaluation. And the only way to determine economic viability or environmental acceptability is to conduct a preliminary design. Unless we know that this is the preliminary design, this is going to be the block cost or the you know approximate cost of construction. So, based on those things only, we can go for calculation of expected economic cost, economic benefit and also the likely environmental impact. Now, obviously, when we carry out all these investigations, this may result the PPR preliminary project report to proceed to DPR that means, detailed project report may be as it is or may be after modification or we may drop it from further considerations. Let me clarify this point once again. We fix up or we decide an initial alignment which is technically acceptable. We carry out preliminary engineering what we call as preparation of preliminary project report. We estimate the block cost say the approximate cost and we calculate the benefit, calculate the cost, carry out economic evaluation. If we find it is economically viable project, beneficial project and also it is environmentally acceptable, then we proceed for the detail engineering and we try to go for the DPR preparation. In some cases obviously, you may have to uh, make some minor changes in the overall process uh, to safeguard the environmental aspect or to make sure that it is economically viable project, but with minor modification. And then we proceed it for the detailed project report preparation of DPR. Or else, if we find any serious problem at this stage, we drop that alternative for further consideration. We just leave it at this stage and we either try to find out a new alternative or a new possibility. Here are some of the guidelines for selection of technically feasible routes. Uh, it, it is uh, very difficult to give you exact you know items, but you can you can develop try to develop a feel that and develop a sense that when you are uh, deciding an initial alignment, what are the things you should look at and in in, in other way uh, we can tell you some of the do's and don'ts. Let us try to see that. Run the alignment on as high a ground as possible. Basically, try to take the ridge line. It will obviously be beneficial from drainage point of view and there are several other advantages. Similarly, run the alignment on soils that provide better subgrade support, consequently reducing the pavement cost. You all know that pavement takes about 40 percent of the total construction cost. So, obviously, if we take a better soil property or run the road through soil which is better or which provides a better subgrade support, maybe we will require lesser thickness of the pavement and we can save substantial cost. So, if you find there are marshy areas, lands or areas where the soil condition is not that good, we do not try to take the road through that area. Run the alignment that satisfy the required design standards, this is understood. Avoid the alignment passing through village streets when the road connects a chain of villages, preferably the alignment should go around the village, because there are settlements, there are villages, habitations. So, obviously, it is very difficult to construct the road within or if you take the road through that area, it is difficult. So, 
let them be by the side of the road and you take the road maybe just by the side of the village. So villagers get connectivity but you have least disturbance to existing habitation, population and features. Also remember and try to study the problem of land acquisition avoiding it to the extent possible. This is a major bottleneck for development of new roads. If we have to acquire land where there are permanent structures, even otherwise also land acquisition is a major problem. So while taking the road, keep it in mind that as far as possible you should be able to take the road without uh, the need of land acquisition. Wherever it is necessary also that land acquisition to be done, it is much easier to acquire land where there are no permanent structures, maybe that is open land, free area, rather than taking a uh, or occupying area where you have permanent features, people are living, there are houses, buildings and all other features. So we obviously try to keep in mind the possibility requirement and also the problems associated with land acquisition and try to avoid the possibility or the need for acquiring land. Also consider the proximity of road construction material because materials are to be brought from other areas. So you take the road in such a way that you can get easy access for construction material. Avoid marshy lands, waterlogged areas, areas of poor subgrade support, expansive soil areas, etc., to the extent possible. As far as possible, avoid the problematic areas. Run the alignment to keep minimum construction, maintenance, and travel operation cost. Avoid the alignment with sharp cars because it will be difficult for you to satisfy the design control and criteria. Areas of poor visibility because that may invite sight distance problem. You are already aware of this requirement of sight distance. Run the alignment with due consideration to safety aspects for various junctions, especially the ones main connecting the main highways. So when it is connecting the main highways, the grade should be proper, the angle should be proper. So when you are finally connecting it to the main road, you must bear in mind all these aspects and if your problems or life will be much easier if your initial alignment selection itself you consider all these aspects and accordingly select an alignment. Later on it will be much easier to satisfy all such requirements when you are making the final design. Run the alignment to cross major rivers in perpendicular direction. Of course, for minor streams it is may not be a major problem, but when you have uh, big rivers or major rivers, try to cross the rivers as far as possible in perpendicular direction. With this background, let us see the selection of preferred alignment. How we select a preferred alignment? The approach typically involves compromising between the user cost and the construction cost. Try to understand these two aspects very clearly. One is the user cost, another is the construction cost. What happens if we make a road, say perfectly, perfectly straight road is anyhow not desirable, but a generally good alignment. Okay? as far as shorter length, good geometry and generally straight or maybe with some very mild curves and generally taking the shorter distance. Obviously the road user cost will be much lesser because the road is generally taking the shorter route, alignment is fine, geometry is fine. So obviously road user cost will be lesser, but in that case you may have to construct bridges, you may have to construct tunnels, you may have to encounter other sorts of problems, heavy cutting, heavy filling. So what will happen? Your construction cost will go up. On the other hand, if you try to minimize the construction cost, that means run the alignment as far as possible following the contour or even when you are 
crossing the contour you have to cross the contour lines, but contour ends over a longer length then what will happen? The road length will increase, the user cost will be more, but the construction cost will come down. So, that means, if we try to minimize the road user cost, it is possible the construction cost will be higher. If we try to minimize the construction uh, cost, it is possible that you will encounter or you will come out with a design or alignment where the road user cost will be higher. So, when we are selecting a preferred alignment, this approach typically involves compromising between the user cost and the construction cost, while seeking the root and physical conditions that result in least adverse environmental impact. That means, here again we have to give due consideration to the environmental aspect. So, we are trying to compromise between user cost and construction cost safeguarding the environmental aspect. Now, how is a balance track between user cost and construction cost? This is very interesting. The idea is basic task is to predict the total life cycle cost instead of considering only the construction cost or only the user cost it is more it is judicious or more rational to try to predict total life cycle cost where we consider construction cost maintenance cost and also the road user cost obviously they are all function of the road design okay and other policy options which may be considered that means essentially take the alternative or that's the preferred alignment which is minimizing the life cycle cost. That means, we are considering the construction cost, we are considering the maintenance cost, we are considering the road user cost and we are taking the option where the life cycle cost is minimum. Now, whatever I have discussed just now, I am trying to explain that thing once again. Let us consider that point A and point B to be connected. These are the contour lines you can see. So, in this case, we have uh, taken that alignment following the general contour line. So, you need you know list earthwork and all sorts of you know other other expensive items like bridge or tunnel or other ancillary structure. But here the root length is more, so the user cost you expect to be more and construction cost is lesser because there is no you know ancillary structure. In this case, I have tried to indicate generally almost a straight line connecting this two point, almost a straight line, but in this case you need a probably a bridge because you are crossing the contour lines within a very short distance, you also need a tunnel. So, what we find here? In this case, user cost is more, construction cost is less. In this case, construction cost is more because of the bridge and tunnel and the user cost is less because it is nearly a straight road, so the generally following the shorter route with good geometry. So, what happens if you try to uh, increase or decrease, if you try to decrease the user cost with a better design like this one? your highway cost or the construction cost will be more. If you try to minimize the highway cost like in this case, your user cost will be more. So, it normally follows a trend as shown in this sketch or the graph. And what is our attempt? We try to take that option which is neither minimizing only the user cost nor minimizing only the construction cost but trying to minimize the life cycle cost considering user cost, construction cost as well as the maintenance cost. That is what is explained in this slide. Now, the preferred alignment can only be determining, determined by comparing the total cost for user and the construction as well as maintenance cost incurred by the implementing agency at each technically feasible alternative and selecting the alternative 
with the least monetary cost and acceptable non-quantifiable impacts. Now, let us try to understand the outline of steps for determining a potential horizontal alignment. Let us consider this point A and point B are to be connected by a new road and you can clearly see here the contour lines which are plotted, which are obtained from the uh, topographic map. Now, first let us try to connect it by almost a straight line. So, if we connect it like this, this is the first attempt. What we find? You can observe that between x and y, between these two points, a number of contour lines are crossed within a very short distance. This is one contour line, this is another contour line. Okay? So, you have a number of contour lines which you are crossing within a very short distance. If the scale is known, right, you know how the contour lines are plotted and you know the approximate distance between point x and point y, you can easily calculate what is the approximate slope. So, if you calculate that, you can find that if you really try to connect it, taking this example like this almost by a straight line, your slope will definitely be more than the acceptable one and in that case your earthwork will be uh, substantial. So, what it is indicating we must try to find out alternative routes with less steep slope. Okay? So, we go for the next one. We give a new trial, while giving a new trial what is our aim? We know that if we try to cross it by a straight line, almost like a straight line, then we are crossing the contour lines within a very short distance. So, if y is the change in elevation of the z value and x is the distance, y by x is becoming much higher. So, what we are trying to do, we try to cross the control lines over a longer length. We take the alignment in such a way that we cross the alignment over a cross the control lines over a longer distance. So, higher will be the x value. So, what we have done here, try to see that. We start drawing tangents, different tangents like this. Earlier, we are connecting it like this. Now, we are drawing tangents like this. So, what we do obviously, we are crossing the control lines over a longer distance of a longer horizontal distance. So, we draw it like this and then try to give a finished shape making proper curves. So, sketch new trial alignment with reduced ground slope, convert the sketch into dimension tangent and circular curves wherever these two tangents are meeting you try to insert a curve. Then step 4 construct a profile of GL as a basis for defining profile of new roads. Check for maximum slope, cut and fill, check for balanced earthwork, possibility of balanced earthwork, grade near the intersection, minimum grade in general and etcetera. Here I have shown it, you can see this green line showing the existing profile and the red line showing the approximate highway profile. So, once we have plotted that, we know what is the amount of cut, what is the amount of fill, whether that cut material can be used as fill, whether the artwork can be balanced, whether the grade is permissible, all the features one can study and it can be studied very easily. Okay? So, now I will show you the process for developing and checking alternative alignments. It is again a hypothetical example. Let us consider that we have to connect this point A and point B. The topography is known, so the contour lines are known. So, preliminary analysis of a route connecting point A and point B. This is an example of design control. You know the design speed, maximum super elevation, minimum radius, maximum grade, horizontal angle at intersection, maximum grade at intersection, minimum grade at all locations from drainage point of view, worst case minimum crest curve length, worst case minimum sag curve length like that all 
detailed design controls are available. You already know in details about the geometric design part. So, like that you have the design control. Now, keeping those things in mind, we are now trying to investigate an initial possible route. It is clear from our past experience that if we want to connect it by a straight line, obviously uh, that will not satisfy the requirement. That means, we will have to encounter much steeper slope or we may require some ancillary structure. So, what we take? We take a reasonably shorter route, say route 1. That way we take it. It is not exactly a straight line connecting these two points, but a reasonably shorter length defined as route 1. Then as I have explained to you earlier, we carry out all the steps. Initially, we draw tangent, then provide smooth curve, then we uh, take the ground profile, we also take plot the highway profile, we see what are the cuts, what is the maximum amount of cut, what is the maximum amount of fill, whether the artwork is balanced, all those steps we carry out. So, general step is R, draw the horizontal alignment to scale, examine the location where grade is more than the permissible grade, examine the depth of cut and fill for a profile with a maximum of say 6 percent grade as per the design control. And we know that it is unacceptable if the cut is over 15 meter and nowhere to use the material. Say in this example, if you have uh, seen that, you have seen the depth of cut is maximum. Okay? It is say, let us assume that it is more than the permissible. If you actually take the values and calculate it, you will find like that. So, that way only it is plotted. So, we know the contour line. What we have observed in this case that uh, uh, if we try to keep the slope maximum 6 percent, then we have to go for heavy cutting cutting over more than 15 meter and nowhere we can use the cut material as fill. That means, cutting and filling is not balanced, artwork is not balanced. So, what we conclude from this exercise is as follows. Inability of root 1 to provide acceptable gradient satisfying the cut and field requirement and also you can see clearly a somewhat similar route. Every designer, every planner will probably draw a different line, but any line which is almost similar to this existing one, whatever is shown here as root one, will also bring out the same observations. Okay? No drastic or you know substantial change. So, what we conclude? We conclude that root one is unable to satisfy the uh, requirement of grade without violating the maximum cut limit and it is also found that artwork cannot be balanced. So, cut and fill cannot be balanced. So, we explore now two and other alternatives called root 3 and root, root 2 and root 3. I have shown it here. You can see that we have not taken route which is similar to the earlier one. Earlier one was something like this and we know any similar route will also not be uh, acceptable. So, we take or cross the contour over a longer length. So, obviously, because of this nature of the contour here, either we can take the route like this as indicated by route 2 or else we take the road like this, taking the other side, going to the other side. So, these are the two possible routes that we have identified logically from the experience of the first route and then now we try to explore these two routes. Same thing investigation on route 2, convert route 2 into series of tangent and curves, check the minimum allowable radius, check the intersection angle, construct the, the existing ground profile establish vertical alignment without exceeding permissible limit and maximum height of cut and fill. That means, you remember that last example case 1 or root 1, we, we when we try to satisfy the requirement of 
the acceptable grade, we had to go for heavy cutting more than the permissible limit and also cutting and filling were not balanced. So, here in this case we try to achieve that, that means we try to achieve acceptable slope and also at the same time do not without violating the maximum cut limit and also we try to make sure that as far as possible generally earthwork is balanced that means cut equal to amount of cutting and amount of filling are generally balanced. Let us see as I have shown earlier in this case also we have drawn the profile of root 2. You can clearly see that this gives a much better match with the existing ground profile. You can see the cutting is not substantial, filling is also not substantial and you can easily see the cut and fill are generally balanced. You have to cut here, you have to fill here, you have to cut here, mild amount here again you have to fill. So, what you can see the cutting and filling are generally balanced and also the other design controls are also satisfied. So, what we say observations are root 2 is technically feasible because we are able to satisfy the general design controls. We provide able to provide the grade as required okay, without we do not exceed the permissible value, we do not exceed the permissible value for cutting, earthwork is also generally balanced. So, this is a technically feasible route, but obviously each engineer may arrive at a slightly different geometric design at least from preliminary efforts. The way I have drawn the line or alignments, if you draw, you probably draw in a slightly different manner, but you will also generally reach to the same conclusions. The way I draw, the way you will draw, the way others will draw may be slightly different, but an alignment of that nature or generally following that path will also have, you will find the same observations. Now, similar investigation on root 3, in this case also you find it is very well matching with the existing profile and you are able to satisfy all the requirements, cut and fill at balance, no excessive cut, okay. slope is also maintained, other features can also be maintained the way you have taken the line. So, observation of on root 3 is also similar you find that root 3 is also a technically feasible route. So, what we find now in terms of screening and selection of routes for preliminary design, we find that both routes 2 and 3 are technically feasible in terms of allowable grade, in terms of cut and fill depth, in terms of horizontal and vertical alignment and route 1 is clearly inadequate. So, what we conclude from this exercise? we reject root 1, where we could not satisfy all the requirements, but we take root 2 and root 3 for further investigations as I indicated earlier, that once you have identified technically feasible routes, now we have to go for some kind of further investigation by means of an initial economic analysis and also environmental studies to take the best out of these two for detailed engineering or preparation of DPR. So, at this stage we reject root 1 and take root 2 and root 3 both these routes for further investigations. In some cases you will find it will be easy if you try to put the information in this format like here you put the criteria these are only indicative. Okay. You, you can make your own criteria like the way I have shown here length, you can see what are the lengths, whether you are able to satisfy all the design controls, whether the cut and fill are balanced, whether you need any special structure or ancillary structure, whether there are major environmental impacts, possibility of major environmental impacts, whether there are any potential high cost item like that. This is not a comprehensive list. You can, I am just trying to show the way you can uh, summarize the findings uh, for a better evaluation purpose. So, you put all the criteria and then you say 
root 1, root 2, root 3 in this case as maybe we explore 3 roots. If you explore some more roots maybe root 4, root 5, then based on all these criteria, you write what are the items. Maybe length root 1 is 2 kilometer, here 2.5 kilometer, here 3.5 mil kilometer, here the cut and fill is balanced, here it is not balanced, here it is balanced, say for example. So, then once you have this tabular representation, you can easily see in a summary form how different roots are in terms of uh, satisfying your requirements and accordingly you make decision. In this case as I have already told we have rejected root 1 for certain reasons and root 2 and root 3 both are technical feasible alternative. So, we carry them forward for further investigation for carrying out a preliminary economic uh, analysis uh, and also environmental impact analysis. Now, there could be some non-standard situation in some cases. For example, if you are doing it for mountainous terrain, it may be difficult to satisfy specified controls without deep cuts, breaches and tunnels because the terrain condition itself is like that. You probably cannot avoid you know deep cuts, bridges, tunnels, etcetera. In such cases, what could be the solutions? Solutions are like this. Either you take sharp curves or go for speed restrictions or you construct bridge, tunnel, etcetera. So, either you go for heavy cons you know expensive construction or else you compromise in terms of design standard. So, go for the speed reduction, maybe give some uh, sharper curves, etcetera. And in all these cases, more detailed analysis must be carried out and the procedure I have already discussed. And the final decision is based on construction, maintenance and user cost estimate and comparison. So, again the final decision must be made based on life cycle cost analysis and comparison. Take all the cases, one with this, one without uh, bridge and all such possibilities and then make final decision based on life cycle cost analysis considering construction, maintenance and user cost estimates. Now, drainage provision is also very important. I have indicated it when I talked about do's and don'ts. An initial drainage design indicating the main location of catchment, ditches, culverts and bridges are important even in the preliminary stage. Alignment must be altered if necessary and if you find that the road cannot be uh, adequately drained or if it adversely affect the existing drainage condition. This is a very, very serious problem we face in many cases. So, you have to take care of this part. Do not disturb the natural drainage system and also you have to make sure adequate drainage, required drainage for the uh, newly developed roads or what you are going to develop it. Now, let me put some of the questions. What are the sources of information normally used for selection of an initial alignment? That is one question. Second question is explain your understanding about technically feasible route. Now, quickly I will try to answer to questions of lesson 3.15. First question was when the climbing lane is justified on a two lane road? you know there are three possibilities. First is upgrade traffic flow rate in excess of 200 vehicles. Second, upgrade truck flow rate in excess of 20 vehicles per hour and one of the following conditions must exist. A 15 kilometer or greater speed reduction is expected for a typical heavy truck or the level of service E or F exists on the grade or a reduction of two or more levels of service is experienced when moving from the approach segment to the grid. So, one of these conditions should exist and the earlier two, then you can go or you can justify a climbing lane. But I must mention that safety consideration may justify the addition of climbing lane regardless of the grade or traffic volumes. So, if you find major safety problem that itself may justify the need for climbing lanes. The next question was mentioned different types of emergency escape ramps used for mitigation of operational problems on downgrade. 
there are gravity type, arrested bed type and sand pile type, but four basic designs predominance. One is the sand pile type and there are three types of arrested bed, descending grade, horizontal grade and ascending grade. Discuss various methods for increasing passing opportunities on two lane roads. You know we can, we have discussed, we can improve the passing opportunities by providing passing lanes, by providing turnouts, by providing shoulder driving, by providing shoulder use sections. So, these are the four major methods of or for increasing passing opportunities on two lane road. Now, because this is the last lesson uh, for this module, the questions, two questions what I asked based on today's lesson that also answer I will try to give because this is the last lesson. So, what are the sources of information normally used for selection of an initial alignment? Sources of information are topographic maps, aerial photographs, geological and soil maps and also ground surveys. Explain your understanding about technically feasible route. Remember that no excessive construction or maintenance problems are envisaged and such that the design control and policy on geometric design standard are adhered to. That means, we have to satisfy the requirement of design controls, whatever should be the curve, super elevation, angle, grade, all aspects are to be satisfied without major construction and maintenance cost. Then we will say that alternative, we will consider the alternative as a technically feasible route. Thank you. That completes our discussion about 3.16 lesson and also with this we close this module. Alignment normally we do first and then we carry out the detailed uh, design, geometric design, but it is better to understand first all the features. So, we have first discussed in details about the geometric design and with that background today we have learned how the initial alignment can be decided. So, teaching wise or learning wise we have first learned the geometric design part in details and then we have learned how to have a better uh, alignment, how to decide a better alignment. But when you go in reality, first you decide an initial alignment and then you go for detailed design, geometric design. So, with this one we complete all uh, our discussions about this module geometric design. Thank you.